Last week, a Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fitzo was shot four times by a gunman. He is currently in stable but critical condition. Initially, it was believed that the alleged shooter, 71-year-old pensioner Juraj Sintula, acted alone. However, Slovak authorities are now considering the likelihood that he was part of a coordinated group, more specifically, Ukrainian group. Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. Slovak Interior Minister Matos Sutaj Estok stated on national television that the attack seemed more likely to have been organized. This theory emerged after it was discovered that Sintula's Facebook communications were deleted four hours after the attack, a task unlikely to have been performed by Sintula or his tech illiterate wife. Further investigation revealed that Sintula had been communicating with an online community about his plans, although the nature of the community, whether humorous or malicious, remains unclear. A woman suspected to be Sintula's wife has been seen in police custody, but her exact involvement is still under investigation. Speculation about a Ukrainian connection has emerged due to Fitzo's controversial stance on ending Slovakia's aid to Ukraine. Fitzo was elected on a platform promising to halt military support to Ukraine, a promise he has fulfilled, causing frustration among pro-Ukrainian factions. Journalist Neboha Malik explained that previous Slovak government had provided substantial military aid to Ukraine, including weapons, tanks and artillery. Fitzo's decision to stop this aid has been a significant shift in policy. Malik suggested that those angry with Fitzo's stance might have the motives linked to the attack. Columnist Lucas Leroux, writing for SIN News, emphasized the need to investigate possible international involvement in the assassination attempt. Leroux pointed out that world leaders who oppose aid to Ukraine, such as Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, have been placed on Ukraine's Mirotovorets kill list. He argued that Slovak authorities should consider whether foreign agents could have influenced or financed the attack. Norwegian analyst Stephen Karganovic, writing for Slovakian outlet Skesprevi, also suggested that globalists and Project Ukraine might be behind the attack. Karganovic noted that the lone wolf theory often serves as a convenient narrative for larger conspiracies comparing it to the assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has remarked that the forthcoming European parliamentary elections will be crucial for determining the direction of war and peace in Europe. Although the European Parliament has limited direct influence on the NATO-Russian proxy war in Ukraine, a conservative victory could still exert significant pressure for a peaceful resolution. In this context, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Vice President Vera Jourova have raised concerns about potential Russian interferences in the elections. Their comments seem aimed at preemptively undermining a possible conservative victory by framing it as influenced by foreign meddling. Von der Leyen's warning about Russian interference came just before the assassination attempt on Fitzo while Jorova's comments on disinformation resilience followed a few days later. The Eurocrats' narrative has shifted to focus on Fitzo's assassination and its potential political repercussions. The primary target of this narrative appears to be the undecided voters, who might typically lean liberal but are beginning to resonate with conservative positions on issues like Ukraine. The assassination attempt, driven by misinformation about the Slovak leader could sway these voters towards the conservatives. To counter this, Eurocrats are framing a vote for conservatives as aligning with Russian interests. Not Russian interference. This divide is so profound that it has created single issue voters who will cast their ballots solely based on candidates' positions on Ukraine. Discrediting this voter behavior as a result of Russian meddling undermines the democratic process. Any assassination or assassination attempt should be gauged on the basis of three factors, means, motives, and opportunity. Did Ukraine have the means to assassinate Robert Fitzo? With NATO backing Ukraine, the answer is a definite yes. Did Ukraine have a motive for assassinating Fitzo? Definitely, they did. And lastly, did Ukraine have an opportunity 
to assassinate Robert Fitzroy. It seems like they just did. But again, the last part remains a matter of conjectures. Truth will emerge. But for now, it does seem that Fitzroy was targeted by pro-Ukrainian outfits.